Lurie Crow, a song that many of us will never forget. <laughs> now, the Lagos State Government has made it clear that it is determined to ensure sanity on the road by enforcing the state traffic laws. And to achieve this, the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, popularly known as LASMA, has rolled out 64 traffic offenses in their statute and the penalties. Huh. So the LASMA, the VIO, they advise all residents to ensure that they obey traffic rules at all times, otherwise they will face the consequences. Well, that is the part that a lot of people are worrying about. Will they face the consequences? While some offenses carry um, various um, fines and imprisonment and training at Lagos State <laughs> Driving Institute, there are about 20 offenses that provide for the seizure of cars, trucks, motorcycles of traffic offenders. Well, we have a director of the Vehicle Inspection Service, Lagos State, that's otherwise known as the VIO. He's here with us, Mr. Bola Toriola. Good morning. Good morning. And beside him is Mr. I.K. Okonkwo, who is Executive Secretary of Arrive Alive Road Safety Initiative. Good, Good morning. morning. And we also have the Deputy Corps Commander, Lagos State Sector Head of Operation, Mr. Matthew Zango. Good morning Good and thank morning. you for having me. Thank you very much for coming. Now, all this is very welcoming news to all of us in Lagos State who have seen our fair share of madness on the <laughs> roads. <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of people are wondering if really now these 64 items are enough to make sure that there's sanity on the roads in Lagos. Mr. Toriola. Uh, I must start with the Excellency Directive. You see, one of the programs of this government is what you call traffic management and transportation. When you look at the team, the main focus of this present administration. And we all know traffic management is very key for the state to grow in terms of sanity, security, safety, and orderliness. And that's why the government has come out with this program to ensure we have free flow of traffic and there is always law and order in the state because we have observed that People, people, our government taught people on their own should be able to abide by the rules and regulations. But what we have seen is quite different. That is why the Excellency has rolled out what's called executive order to ensure we bring back the sanity on our roads. Mm. Okay, so the, having these laws, I'll bring it to you, Mr. Kunko. Bringing back order to the roads, is it just about the laws or the rules? Or is it something else that needs to be done in terms of creating more awareness for people to imbibe the to imbibe sanity to imbibe sanity or to bring back sanity onto our roads we'll go real beyond the uh, well these others i'll just go straight to um two areas one is the issue of enforcement within the enforcement what constitutes insanity on our roads? Okay? We have not done well in the area of enforcement. We have adopted laws that will bring all the risk, all the known risk factors, you know, in line with uh, global best practices, if enforced. And despite all that they have done, government, civil society groups, and other stakeholders, Traffic uh, uh, rules are still very highly being violated. Okay, what's, what's, what's the issue? Let me just take one after the other. For instance, um, driving in the direction of um, prohibition, one way we we'll call it. Mm -hmm. Driving against traffic. Against traffic. Yeah. It's something that I, I, I could say we have accepted to be normal. Within Lagos, for instance. Um, you look at, uh, just go and stand out at any traffic point. Within one hour, you will find at least 40 buses, 40 vehicles. Let me just call buses. Vehicles, all motorists, rolling against the light, against the red light. And these things happen unchallenged. 
So what do we do? My, I, I think that there are those people who enforce our laws should be equipped with the knowledge you know, that they require to bring all of this into place, all the new others. That's by way of training. Besides training, the public must be made to understand, we must bring them up to speed with respect to the do's and don'ts of roads. It's very, very critical. In doing this too, look at the roads. The roads require communication. They need to communicate to us very strongly by way of uh, road signs, road markings. Because if you tell me now that uh, this road is a one-way road, I should enter it. Yes, I don't have to enter it, in fact. But I have to, if I'm just new to the area, I have to see a sign, I have to see a warning that this is a one-way road. Because there are streets that, by convenience, we have turned into a one-way road. And if you're not coming with that area, if you come in there, there will be a sign that, tell, that, that tells you, look, this is the one-way road. If you go in there, whatever you see, you take. But if I don't know, if there's no sign, that somewhere in Yaba, somewhere uh, around Unilag, is a one-way road. I have known that for a long time because I, I've been playing that road. But if you go there now, the sign is no, the faded, somewhere. faded, but even at that, is backing, it's been bent. Oh dear. So if you go in there and you, you know where you see that sign, you know it is somebody, you can't even see what it is. You go in there, somebody holds you and charges you for one violation. 20,000. I mean, whatever the amount. <laughs> you see? So um, we need to really um, go into very massive advocacy okay. to bring the public to Mrs. know Mrs. what Zango, I want you to do. He's talked about enforcement in from what he says enforcement can only be enhanced by awareness if the people know but you are part of the enforcement team and you've been in Lagos. you've seen what's happening how quickly can we get residents of lagos to understand the essence of this drive well over time we've been doing uh our base in terms of uh, enlightenment and education. And um, we extended it even to having advocacy visits to traditional uh, rulers' communities where we educate them and enlighten them on how to use the road. But uh, when we're talking of enforcement, just as uh, rightly pointed out, you know, I mean, about the awareness you're talking of. People, will, you keep on informing people. But it's just the Nigerian culture that when you don't enforce, you are just entertaining them. They will behave as if they've not even had anything. And what we want is just what the governor has done, this executive order. If you look back, most states that have uh, been able to tackle issue of traffic very well you check the sitting governor of that state if the political will of the government is entrenched then the law enforcer will be able to do his work without problem mm. so and what he has done if he keeps by it then it will be workable but where if the political will is such that even some arrests when you make them the same People will call you that social person is this released here. But so well, it would the work. governor made it clear that nobody should call him. Yes. <laughs> they should pay their That's fine. it. Is it so, but let me, hold on, let me bring you back to Mr. Teriela. <laughs> if the political will of the sitting governor is entrenched, then the enforcement officer will have the power and the confidence to do his or her job. What happens where the enforcement officer or the agency of enforcement is not exactly doing what it's supposed to do? Uh, case in point, you find it, there are laybys on the road where um, buses are supposed to enter. But the buses will not enter the layby. They'll come and park on the road. And enforcement officers will be standing there. Some of them just watching. Some of them collecting. Police, last month, 
even sometimes VIO, even though it's not exactly your job to do that. Well, I'm, not, I'm just grouping all of you together and for, yes. because you can enforce as well. Yes. Yeah, all of them will be standing there and watching, and the buses will go. A friend of mine was, who came by, private car, saw the bus stop, but dropped someone along the road because he saw the buses dropping. Guess what? The police picked him up. And when he said, why are you not picking up the other people there? They said, no, are you, can't you see the car you're driving? Are you Is it boss? like their own? <laughs> so how do you not expect Lagosians, those residents in Lagos, to listen to the enforcement officer? When the enforcement officer chooses who to enforce or who to not to us indirectly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I need to shed more light on how the government tend to achieve the traffic management and transportation. Please. Because the government is looking at the about, let me say, five components to achieve this. And part of it is capacity building and continuing training and discipline among the officers. When you look at when the governor signed the executive order, on what? What? It has to do with the traffic management. We can call it road safety management. Also about the road. The road has to be what? Safer and mobility. You see, thought has to do with the vehicle too. Your vehicle must be road road. You must have all the prescribed particulars. At the same time, the vehicle must be registered, safer, safer vehicle. Look about the road users. How do you ensure road users abide by the rules and regulations? Like what you are doing today, by trying to educate the public so that they can know what to do. You also look at the emergency. But all these components has also has elements that is attached to it, which has to do with enlightenment enforcement. So the government also enforce on the officers too. See, when you look at the transport sector law, under section 325, it has to talk about all the laws also apply to the officers too. So if you are an officer, you must abide by the rules. You must also carry out your job in line with uh, protocol of enforcement, uh, what called protocol of enforcement in the transport sector. So you must not discriminate, like what you are saying now. He's looking at the private vehicle. He's trying to, okay, private vehicle must... You must apply the law on them, mm. whereas the commuter vehicle, called commercial vehicle, is trying to be lenient on them. It is not so. So, like what happened yesterday, you see, government has a way of disciplining its own officials. Let me put it that way, its own officials. Like what happened yesterday, two officers were caught trying to what? Extort money from the motorists. So, we have internal mechanics to also ensure our own officers abide by the rules and they also use the rule of engagement, I mean, how they're supposed to carry out their job. So government is not leaving even officers alone. Government is trying to look at the whole thing, both the citizen and the world and the officers. And I keep on saying government is not after the fines. What the government needs for motorists or citizens is for them to voluntarily comply with the world, traffic and regulation. That is what. And capacity building is a continuous thing. Keep on improving your officers through training. I just came back from your training. All my officers have been going for training. Well, we need to do it so that we can all feel it. Because we are all know we are not happy with what is happening in Lagos now. And we need to tackle I don't it. know if it, you're correct with that. We are not happy with what's happening in Lagos now. Because some people are actually happy about it. Those commercial I'm, buses, I'm sure. Yeah, right? some people I mean, are. Mr. Gongo, uh, some of the offenses, failure to yield the right of way of a pedestrian at a pedestrian crossing. <laughs> Failure of a slow-moving vehicle to keep to the right lane and driving where you've spoken about the one way. Oh. Pedestrian crossing. Yeah, some of us know what those lines mean on the road. I'm sure there are many who don't even know what those lines mean. So, how much education is taking place, especially with those commercial buses? Because they just drive as if there are no traffic laws at all. So how much are they being taught the meanings of all these markings? There's another one that says, if you, the, the, the offside rule, for instance, those yellow lines, do those, do, do those bus drivers know the meaning of all that? Not just the bus drivers, now. What do they know? Okay, that's me what, know. what do the bus drivers <laughs> know? But, I, but I'll tell you the truth. Um, FRST, for instance, has been doing a bit of uh, advocacy in that area. And they have been supported massively by the NGOs, the NGO community here in Lagos. Um, we visit their parks mm -hmm. to talk to them as often as uh, sometimes twice a month. The issue is that their mindset is quite different. 
when you are going to the park, as soon as they are told that the people are coming to talk to them, look at the faces. Because now you are taking them off their work. Some who have taken off for one decision or the other will be waiting. And that waiting means losing money. Hmm. Um, for the schools, that's where we have our, st our strength, school children. Because we believe that a lot of us have lost it. The madness, the chaos we find on the street. And you see, I, I tried to step down on the using saying commercial buses. Because they're not only the corporates here. Mm. He will let you kind of that uh, those of us who are elites um, are, are even worse on the roads. Then, big men, eh? those guys in black jeeps, they mess the work we do. They, they, one way, as we call it, as soon as there's a small a little build up, what you will see is uh, somebody with a, a pickup and a siren and a jeep following. Being done against one way, and when that is done, other people will follow. What will you do? Yeah, As the last man officer. When they start arresting the big boys, then we will know that they mean business. The, yes, so because you don't arrest the big boys, and if you don't arrest the big boy moving, and there are about 20 or 30 other vehicles behind him, why would you go, go after any, any of them? You don't. So, what we do, what have done is that we have tried to catch those who can catch. The bus drivers are like outlaws, and it's like certified outlaws. The government has agreed that they, 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 they can do whatever they want to do. I said it before. Go see what the impunity will they drive. They run against one way, unchallenged. They run the traffic, red light, unchallenged. Oh, well, Mr. Kunko, when I see a police vehicle that seems to be on normal business, the siren is not blowing, he's not at speed, and he is driving one way. What kind of example is that? Then I follow him and they catch me. That's what I'm saying. But I'm following you. You are the policeman. You're supposed to set the example. I saw one on a motorbike yesterday without his helmet. And because I was thinking about this topic today. So look at this guy. Hmm. I wish I could take a picture of him and show it on the program today. You are supposed to be showing us the example, and you are the one breaking the law. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you know, is it some time ago, in 2012, for instance, 2012, Lagos State. FRSC and, and those of us who support them. We celebrated so, uh, huge success in motorcycle safety in, this, in, this, in, in Lagos, for instance. That we, was then. We, we initiated, we initiated the, 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 uh, um, revitalizing motorcycle safety. Arrive Alive alone spent almost 200 million naira on that service. It was celebrated. Lagos called us together to go to the hospital, um, orthopedic, that we didn't have best spaces. When we succeeded with the motorcycle safety programs, the, 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 the halls, the, the, the wards were empty. And we were happy about it. Just after that celebration, we now relaxed. We are back. We're even worse than when we started. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the questions um, that are coming in, Benga, for instance, says, what's the root cause of traffic violation? Insufficient roads, waterways, rail systems, example, Lake Ekbe, um road needs alternate roads and all of that. Is that the root cause of road madness? Is it a question of personnel not doing what they're supposed to do or vehicle um, using vehicles, road users not knowing what they, are, what they ought to do? We'll look at all of that when we come back from this break. Welcome back. Now, we've had plenty of mails coming in here. I, let me see if I can do one or two more. Um, okay, I read a tweet from Benga that says, what's the root cause of this violation? Is it insufficient roads, the waterway is not working, or failed rail systems and all of that? Um, Latif Ogunle says, the newly rolled out rules are not going to improve road sanity because, I mentioned this earlier, biased enforcement, they Pick, uh, they leave the commercial vehicles to pick on the private vehicles. He talked about police escorts for all the supposed big men. Then that's Latif. He says that our traffic lights are not smart and intelligent. He gave a, an example of Dia in Bagada, where the traffic light stops people on a busy route for 78 <laughs> seconds, 
and passes them for 38 seconds. Is that good enough? Um, mm. um, at Dayton, our follower says, the honest truth is that the agencies put in charge of our road service, our roads are playing lip service, but I'd like to see something different. Olatunji Kola Ole says, Okada drivers seem to have freedom to break all rules, even in the presence of LASMA and other enforcement oh. agents. Azu George says, the proposed enlightenment must be comprehensive. Um, Dele Ige says, our attitude on the road is a metaphor for why Nigeria is what it is, unfortunately. To have sanity on our roads, we need to work on our attitudes. So let me begin with you. From all the, from those few mails I've read, people are concerned about the bias of the enforcement agencies. They are concerned about the fact that the roads are not enough or they are not good enough. Or is it the fact that we need to think about other alternative sources of transportation, the waterways, the rail, and all of that? So what do you think? Well, the, the truth of the matter is uh, attitude, uh, the Nigerian's attitude. Uh, let's assume we have even just one road, like the Lake He, linking Ipe and other places like that. And you're using that road. If we are patient and we go orderly, we won't be having these problems. But where Mr. A would have queued up, then B coming because he has one program or the other and he left his house late and decides to take the Short. other way, yeah, to shortcut. <laughs> Definitely we continue to have these issues. The government cannot give us all the roads we want at the same time. And in my mind, in what I've seen, they are doing their best. But we need to change our attitude. We need to be time conscious in most of the things we want to do. And back again to the enforcers. Yes, there are some enforcers that are very timid. Maybe they see a big jeep. That may have seen a very uh, big car. You know, the person will not even want to approach the person, no matter what the person is doing. Those ones are there. But if, again, the supervisors do come out to monitor the boys outside, definitely we we'll get it right. We'll be getting it right. Then we equally need to look other ways, like the waterways you are talking of, so that uh, it's not every time people will be on the road. Those who have the waterways, who can't as well use boats, can equally follow those ones so that there will be less traffic on the highways. Yeah, less pressure on the roads. Yeah. Now, um, Mr. Toriola, um, you have recently launched the Automatic Number Plate Recognition Program. Please tell us about that. How does it work? Thank you very much. I, I'm going to add to what my colleague said from the FRIC. You see, the road cannot be enough. All you need to do is to manage the traffic on it because the number of vo I mean the volume of vehicles on our roads cannot compare it to the to the roads. But what we need to be to be lane di discipline, we need to maintain our lane and move. As long as we have human beings, there's activity that will be conjecture strong all over the world. But how do we use it is the most important thing. Uh, the issue of the, uh, the new mode of technology now in Lagos State, that is a key thing. That is our new baby. Because you, you have said that, maybe he also said it, that you see some, some of our officers, they feel intimidated when they see an official in going against the law. In a black team. In a black team. <laughs> they cannot even go near them because they are also afraid. But you don't need to be afraid. This is a technology that does not even recognize whether you are a senator, you are a governor, or you are a minister. It just does its own work. So this technology is used to, because the governor, the former governor, challenged the vehicle inspection service that you should look at the way they do it in civilized country or advanced country, the way they do their enforcement and they also ensure people abide by the traffic and pollution. That's why we went into research and we had to travel, study and understudy some countries and to see how they do it. And we observed that what they use is what we call automatic number period recognition. We call it AMPR. How does it work? Maybe I should shed more light. In the technology like I'm in this room now, if I have a CCTV outside with a monitor, I'll know what is happening outside. I have a CCTV outside, 
I have a monitor, I can see what is happening. So the camera is an advanced technology that captured the vehicle. Look at the event. Like what he said, he said there are some traffic lights that give uh, more time mm -hmm. to some less uh, area of vehicles and it, which cause, also cause traffic congestion. Some of our traffic lights in Lagos, we are trying to put a sensor, I must say that, that can also read the traffic, the volume of traffic in one side and give more time. Mm -hmm. So that and so well, it can manage adapt. adjust. Yeah. Yes, yeah. this technology captured the vehicle because this technology has been integrated into the data banks of relevant agencies, like for example, uh, data bank for vehicle license, roadworthiness, hacking permit, body tag, even the FIS database for driver's license because driver's license the tapered uh, products. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. We have the NVA, we have the VIS, we have FIS that does the biometrics and also keep the record. So that, that technology has been linked to all these data banks. So what the machine does is capture the vehicle, now query that vehicle data. So it brings it all up. It brings it all up. So you can read. <laughs> you now, it will do it automatically. <laughs> it will do it. And from there, if the, the motorist has one or two issues, the, the machine automatically send a text to the vehicle owner that you have committed this social so offense. And before they know it, they also get the hard copy at their doorstep. And when they now fail to seek for redress or to pay, when he says, because the law also gave them that room to seek for redress. This is under Section 23 of the Transport Sector Law 2018. It gives them that opportunity to seek for redress to seek for redress. So if they don't seek for redress, the machine will now blackmail such a vehicle. And from there, it will just start showing the vehicle on our monitor or surveillance that we have, and the vehicle will be tracked. Hmm. So this also works with the traffic light violators, I must tell you. And if you are going against the traffic, that is one way. The machine will also I mean, show that you are going against the traffic. So all this so technology is being deployed it's now being in, Lagos. in place now in oh. Lagos. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting indeed. Well, we have many more questions to ask you, but plenty of mails pouring in. <laughs> we have run out of time, but uh, I think we have a clearer picture now. And uh, those who are watching, who live in Lagos, know that those days of breaking all the traffic laws, those days are certainly over. You have to obey every single traffic law. Otherwise, you'll have a bill arriving at your doorstep from a computer, not from a human being. That makes it even worse, doesn't it? A computer is going to send you a message, and you have to get up and go and pay your fine. Well, we have to bring the VIO in some other time to talk to us more about all these things. But for today, we've run out of time, and all that's left for me to do is to say thank you to Mr. Bolang Toriola, who's a director of Vehicle Inspection Service, Lagos State. Um, Executive Secretary, Arrive Alive Road Safety Initiative, Mr. Ike Okonkwo, as well as the Deputy Corps Commander, Lagos State Sector, um, and Head of Operations, Mr. Matthew Zango. Thank you very much for coming. You all have your work cut out now, but you have the computers to help you. So good luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sunrise will be right back with another interesting conversation. Please join us.